Mr. Patterson isn't in the office at the moment. I, I can sort it out. Well, I'll do my best. Yes, yes, I know we were at fault. Right. Tomorrow morning, as early as possible. Julian's. Julian's? How many more? I'm replacing them. Who else is going to ring up? I'm not psychic. Well, we'll have to do something. We are doing something. I'm replacing them. That's all they want. It's not the answer. Do you have an answer? Yes. Tell Keith. Mr. Patterson isn't in the office at the moment. Have you any idea how much this is going to cost? No, but I've got my calculator. I can work it out. Well, work it out. Because sooner or later, someone's going to have to pay. I've done nothing wrong. I know you haven't. I want this job. I like it here. Well, that's all the more reason to come clean. Tell Keith everything. Oh, tell him I've made a mistake. Bought a consignment of dishwater. We must have seen him coming at that chateau. I must have had inexperience written all over me. We don't know that the problem is at the chateau. Not for sure. Well, where else? You gave the bottling plant a clean bill of health. Yes, I can't say anything wrong there. So where does that leave me? I didn't choose those. Nobody's sending them back. Judith, if you were conned, if you were conned, it's not the end of the world. I'll lose my job. And I want the job. I like the job. I'm good at it. Keith said so. Well, that's why he wouldn't sack you. He'd give you another chance. He'd watch everything I did. I'd be on video. You're overreacting. It's not your job on the line. It's only um, orange juice. Oh, I didn't know we had any left. Yeah, yeah. Um, I must have finished it. Do you want some lava? No, I'll make myself a coffee. Yeah, I'll do it for you. You'll miss that bus. What bus? Sammy, don't mess about with me. You didn't go to the hospital on Monday and you didn't go yesterday either. I've got to study. You're very keen all of a sudden. I've always been keen. I want to go to university, don't I? Sammy, it might help if you took those books in, you know. He's got to go back to school sometime. The less he misses, the better. But he doesn't do the same subjects as me. Well, I'm sure that anything would help. Keep his brain active. That's all that is, active. Oh, Sammy, nobody expects you to be there every second, love. Look, I'll go later, OK? That's what you said yesterday. Forgot me towel. Well, that's your fault. Where is it? I'm going to be late. It's in the freezer. Where do you think? I couldn't find it this morning. Well, why didn't you say so this morning? Look, I can't work with this going on. Oh, shut up, Will. You're always moaning. If you were a referee, you'd forget your whistle. Seems to me that both of you forget things once too often lately. I just want me towel, OK? I'll get another one from the bathroom. That's up the stairs and straight opposite. Do you not go in this afternoon? No. She just don't know who she is anymore. Oh, and you're still on the lady bear box, are you? You just get your towel and go. Otherwise, Trammy Rovers won't know who you are. What are you doing now? I've got the sack. No, the heating's gone off at work. It'll be fixed tomorrow. Well, you shouldn't spend your time cleaning. You may as well be at work. May as well be. Something wrong? That came. I didn't get the job. No, didn't you? I'll make you a drink. Yeah, that's all right. Might as well do something constructive. They went to somebody with previous experience of working with the deaf. Well, that's only to be expected, isn't it, love, eh? No. It was only an assistant's job. It wasn't a teacher. I've only been helping out, that's all. I really thought I was in with a chance. You didn't have a chance. You had as good a chance as anyone. No, I didn't. They didn't want me. Well, you need experience, don't you? You know, sign language, that sort of thing. They could have trained me. You don't know how any other people apply for the job. You don't know who you're up against. Oh, yes, I do. I was up against myself. 49, uneducated and fit for nothing. Sheila. Well, it's true. I mean, look at you. You're an electrician. Rod's a policeman. Tracy's a hairdresser. Barry's a shop fitter. You've all got skills. What have I got? All I've ever done is cook and clean all my life. Stop putting yourself down. Sorry. I just felt at home there. Everything seemed right. There'll be other jobs. Anyway, you've got that university course to think of, haven't you? 
Well, I can't carry on with that. It's not bringing any money in. Money's my problem. Yeah, but I'm living off you. So's Claire. It'll be sorted. Doreen will get what she's entitled to. But you're entitled to something as well. No, but it shouldn't be like this. But it is. She can send as many solicitors' letters as she likes, but if I haven't got the money, I can't give it to her, can I? <laughs> if there are any more, I'll tell them. He's a reasonable man. You make him sound like an ogre. I have to pay my way. I don't live with my parents. What's that supposed to mean? It means that I can't afford to be on the door. I've got the flat to keep up. I've bought furniture, curtains. It means a lot to me. Oh, I'm quite the little homemaker. You'd be surprised. Do you think I live rent-free? Do you think my dad gives me pocket money? Look! I'm scared of losing my job. If you stop panicking, you won't lose your job. Oh, God. It looks as though this whole consignment is going to have to be returned. We've got to face that. Chateau Le Mans was a poor vintage. Oh, he'd find out if we replaced every batch. Of course he would. Yes. It's only by chance he doesn't know already. Mm. Shutting your eyes to it won't do any good. I just wish it would go away. And what good will wishing that do? None. I want to tell Keith. No, not yet. He isn't here today anyway. We, we couldn't tell him even if we wanted to. And you don't want to. I'm sorry I shouted at you before, Gordon. I'm sorry I insulted you. When I get upset, sometimes I act like a stupid child. You should have slapped me. I wouldn't dream of it. No, I know you wouldn't. You're far too nice. Also, I might get slapped back. Louise! I wasn't expecting to see you today. Are you in trouble at school? No, I'm fed up. Has Gary been in touch? No. Why don't you phone him? He can phone me. He's probably just as fed up as you are. Bet he wants to hear from you. That's his fault. Anyway, it's up to him. Isn't that a bit childish? Yeah. Has Anna phoned today? No, she'll ring tonight. I've got to go back to Chaswick House. I've got to be home early. Well, I'll ask her to phone you there. No. No, I can't talk to her there. There's too many people. Everyone knows what you're saying. Look, when's she coming home? Her mother's hips healing very slowly. That's how it is when old people break a bone. She could be away a long time yet. How long? It's hard to say. A week? Oh, no, no, much more than that. Well, can I go up and see her again? I think she's got enough on her plate, don't you? Come on, cheer up. I'm not going. Sam? I'm not. I'm sorry, I'm not. I know I took this afternoon off. The school gave me permission to go, but I'm not going. Do you want to tell me what's upset you, love? I don't want to go, that's all. I don't have to go, you know. His mum and dad go and all his friends go. Some of his mum and dad said something to you. No. Well, do they blame you for the accident, then? Probably. They haven't said. They just ignore me. Well, it must be very hard for them, love. I know how your dad and I'd feel if you were paralysed. Yeah, well, he's not permanently paralysed. He will walk again. Yes, he will. But it won't be easy for him. It'll be very slow and painful. He'll need a lot of help and support. I should have known. It's all my fault. I, I wanted to go somewhere different. Yeah. Wasn't your idea to steal the car, though, was it? I should have known. I should have known something was wrong. When I saw that second car, Mum, I just should have known. Well, the inquest will decide whose fault it is. Oh, it doesn't matter whose fault it is, does it? Cav and Tony don't care whose fault it is. Not now. I'm going to redecorate this room. I hate this colour. Anna's the only one I can talk to. She's the only one who understands. Oh, Gary won't talk to me now. And anyway, my dad's no use. He just shouts. But Anna listens to me. Well, can't I listen? It's about things you're not interested in. How do you know I'm not interested in them? But you're not. Helped you with your war project, didn't I? It's, it's about makeup and clothes and me hair. <laughs> well, no, I don't know much about those things. When is she coming home? She won't be home for a long time yet. I miss her too. I'm going to go and see her. Can I come? No. I've got to go by myself. I won't be any trouble. 
There are things we have to sort out, things you don't understand, things between ourselves. And the telephone isn't the best means of communication, you're right. When are you going? Tomorrow. I leave early in the morning. How long are you going to stay? Well, I don't know. Just a day or two. Say hello from me, won't you? Yes, of course. Gordon will still be here. You can pop in and keep an eye on him. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me, eh? I just went on the off chance. They know me. I've worked there before. Well, I don't like the idea of it. Pays better money than being a dinner lady. I earn money. You don't have to. And there's tips. I've told you, I bring in the cash. I don't want you working in a pub. I'll pass the drinks over very quickly and smile. I don't like the idea of other fellas looking at you. <sighs> Look, it's afternoons, that's all. Passing trade, not hardened drinkers, the odd night when they're stuck. It fits in with Claire. I'll have my mornings free. Besides, it's not a totally new experience. I'll still be heating up pies. I'll still be doing cleaning. Barmaids are considered fair game, aren't they? Well, if that offends you, Billy Corkill, maybe it's your mates you should be talking to, not me. Do you know Bob said the same thing when I was working there last time? I was saving up to go to Rome, one of the most important things in my life, and all he could see was men eyeing me up and down. It takes two, you know. I wasn't interested then, and I'm not interested now. I can be let out of the house. I'm not on heat. Yeah? Well, I'm going to collect me money from the wool shop. Oh, will you have a word with her, Frank? If she doesn't want to eat, she doesn't want to eat. It's not about eating. If she doesn't want to go and see Owen, she doesn't want to go and see Owen. Oh, that's typical of you, that is. I'm not going to move her jaws up and down for her, Chris. And I'm not going to frog march her to the hospital, either. I'm not asking you to. I'm not hungry. You just get that down, you. Leave her, Chris. She'll eat when she wants to. She won't starve. You wouldn't notice if she did. Where do you think you're going? Probably going somewhere where she can get a bit of peace and quiet. And I don't blame her. Go on, off you go. Frank, I am really worried about Sammy. She's miserable. She's been a fool and she knows she it. She hasn't been a fool. She has, Chris. And it won't help if you won't admit it. I just think our Jeff is the stupid one. But she is sleeps ahead of him. It makes a song and dance about eating the right food. If it's not organic, it's free range. And what does she do? Jump in a car with two head cases and nearly gets herself killed. Gets them killed. No wonder she's miserable, though. You've got no idea what she's going through. Hi, Louise. Uh, Dad, this is Judith Benison from the office. Just give me a lift back home, so... Uh... Yes, of course. Pleased to meet you, Judith. Oh, come on in. Thanks, Mr. Collins. I'll go in, then. All right, now, don't forget what I said about Gordon. No. There's the money for your taxi. Uh, what did you say about Gordon? She's going to keep her eye on you while I'm away. I'm going up to the Lake District for a couple of days. Mum and Dad are thinking of fostering Louise. She's in a children's home at the moment. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I was there instead. Settled routine, someone to pay your bills. What more could anybody ask? Nothing, Mr. Collins, nothing at all. <laughs> Sammy, Katie. All right. That's long enough for you two to be in your bedrooms. Are you doing any harm? Unless of the lift. Help your mother tidy up. Your stuff's all over the place. They're better off out the way with Lenny coming. There's nothing we can't talk about in front of the kids. Well, I don't want to know what you're talking about. It's nothing to do with me. Should you go to the park, Sammy? It's dark, stupid. Well, they could play some records or something, eh? Oh, yeah, I can play me Pat Boone record, eh? Frank, it's going to be awkward enough with Lenny coming here. Here's a drive lot. No! Chris, it won't be awkward. I know exactly what I'm going to say. I'm not happy about it, but that's another matter. Look, Frank, I'm sorry. Chris, it doesn't matter. And that's him now. Come in, then. Hello, Lenny. Chrissy, girls. Come on, you two upstairs, out the way, please.
want to go to see Owen today? Mind your own business. Is he getting any better? No, he's dead. You shouldn't say that. Shouldn't I? No. That was school. It's all right. Oh, look, Casey, will you go, please? You'd be sorry if you did die. I'd come and see you if you were in hospital. Oh, I'd better stay here then, hadn't I? You're cruel. You should go and see him. You go. You know where he is and take some grapes. I would if I had any. We could go together. I'm not going anywhere with you. Judith on her own. Oh, she's making a phone call. So, what made you decide to go so suddenly? Well, it's not sudden. I've been thinking about it. I miss your mother, you know, for all our little squabbles. Yeah, I know. I want to see what the situation is up there. We have to talk about Louise. Louise misses her, doesn't she? Yes. Does Mum know what you told Mrs Mackay? About wanting to pull out of the fostering. No, she doesn't. She's not going to be pleased. Well, I can't tell her on the phone. Well, just be careful how you approach it. Mum's much more involved with Louise than we are. I'm involved up to my neck. No, I mean emotionally involved. Yes, of course. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? The more sympathy I feel for Louise, the less I want to foster her. Can you understand that? I'm doing some spuds. What do you want? Chips or mash? Whatever you like, I'm easy. OK, chips then. All right. Look, Sheila, I'm sorry. So am I. No, you were in the right. I should have told you where I was going. No, you've got to look after yourself. I don't own you. I just had to do something. I was so disappointed about the job. It wasn't the only job in the world, was it? I know. Anyway, it's their loss. They must be blind as well as deaf. Oh, Billy. Oh, I mean, if you don't recognise quality when they see it, do they? So what should we have with these chips, then? I didn't get the money. What? I didn't get the money. 500 quid they owe me. Why weren't they open? Oh, the place was open, all right. It's full of Aldeas buying three-ply, but nothing for me. What did they say? Uh, I need a couple of days cash flow or something like that. Oh, well. But I want that money. A couple of days won't make any difference. 500 quid they owe me. They must think I'm a right mug. Billy, they're bound to pay. Oh, they'll pay all right. I'll make sure they pay. Yeah, I know the difficulties, Frank. I wouldn't be taking it on if I had any choice. I'm not a businessman. I'd love to have joined you. But we took on a big mortgage. And we're struggling to pay for it. And it's the dry rot. Yeah, I don't know when I'll finish paying you. We'll see how it goes, eh? Hey, the lads are grateful for all you've done, though, Frank. They really wanted you to join us. I know, yeah. Thanks. Do you think we'll get this franchise? I'm not counting on it. It's going to be too much competition. Well, your lads have got the know-how and the experience. They're certainly best for the job. And if the management have got any sense, they'll see that. If they do, great. What we want is three or four big contracts for bread and butter. Get ourselves established. Get ourselves a reputation for reliability, then branch out a bit. You know, we always hated that sloppy management, bad workmanship. Well, we're not going down that old road again. And in our setup, there's going to be no workers against the management. Hey, will you still help us, Frank? You know, even if you can't join us, like, but give us advice on union matters and all that sort of thing. Of course I will, mate. I'll be glad to. Come on, lads, I've made some sandwiches for you. Come on, mate. Judy, it's not going already. I think it better be off, Mr. Collins. No, no, sit down, Gordon. Go and make some more coffee. Mm -hmm. Sorry I've been a very poor oh, host. I can see you're busy. Oh, I've finished now. I hate leaving things till the last minute. <laughs> Are you from around here? Yes, uh, I've got a flat in Sefton Park. Oh, student territory. Gordon, have you seen those letters? What letters? Well, the ones for your mother. One from Lucy in particular. 
Lucy's my daughter. She lives in France. She's a very infrequent letter writer. I was going to readdress them. Uh, Mrs. A. Collins. What's wrong with Mr. and Mrs. P. Collins? Well, that's Lucy for you. See a lot of your parents? Yes, I do. In fact, they'd like to see a lot less of me. I'm always borrowing money. <laughs> Lucy's conspicuously independent. Do you have the coffee in here? I uh, hope there's no bad news in that letter. Yeah, so do I. I've enough bad news for Anna as it is. I haven't told her about that wallet incident yet. Oh, Dad. Come on, Judith. Well, I didn't want to bother her with it. And no doubt Louise didn't either. Yeah, well, make sure you don't hold anything else back. Tell her about Gary. Well, Gary's Louise's brother. <laughs> they sound like they're a handful. They are. Sometimes I think I could cope with Louise if she came complete. No accessories to select, no batteries needed. Just Louise in a box with the lid on. Do any of us come like that? No, I suppose not. Yeah, there's no saying how it'll go. Won't know for a couple of years. Well, I hope you don't end up owing too much money, then. You might end up loaded. Who might? Oh, sunk a game. All right. Regular Stanley Matthews, according to your dad. Stanley Matthews, get away. Hey, he was a good player, though, Stan. Yeah, his shorts were longer than his laces. Hey, they were proper boots in them days. Oh, I well, he's with studs, on. <laughs> football was football, then. Yeah, and that loft house, Billy Little. Go on, your dinner's in the oven, love. So do numbers on the shirts. Go and get your dinner, go into the other room with it, Lenny. Your dad are trying to talk here. Well, what is it? Take it out and see, or haven't you got the strength left? Well, I hope you and the lads make a go of it, Lenny. You deserve a success. <sighs> hey, maybe you could join us later. Have a sandwich, Mark? Yeah, go on, there's plenty there. What's all Jeff got? My dinner. You've had yours. No, we haven't. Oh, get out the way, kids. See if there's a couple of cans in the fridge for me, love. Oh, Jeff, will you come and move this kit? It's in my way. Yeah, all right, in a minute. No! Please do. Great. Thanks, love. I'll take these upstairs. Go on, love. Jeff! Yeah, all right. Put it on top of the washing machine, love. If those boots are dirty, you clean them in the sink. Great strategy, Chrissy. Oh, you eat up, love. I've got another plate full ready for you. Please. I'm sure you're going to do well, then. Hey, we'll do our best, Frank. Here, yeah, love. Let me get your glass for that. Oh, sir. Oh. Thank you, dear, love. Cheers. Oh. Have you had enough treatment, or shall I uh, open another tin of tuna? There we go. Stay with us for first time footage of the Royal College of Surgeons examinations in Jimmy's after the break. late back last night? Well, I didn't want to leave until we got hold of Gerald's son. Oh. He's out at a rotary dinner, it seems. I mean, the whole plan rests on them. If they can't take over from your mother, well, there's no way she can abandon ship. But they've agreed. Oh, yes. They don't seem to mind in the least. I don't know what they're going to find, of course. Was it so bad? I'm quite frankly, yes. Mona's feeling physically, but mentally... Uh, Confused. Also depressed. Impatient and depressed by turns. Jell's been a tower of strength, of course. And now he's had a reaction. He's had a whole run of things from arthritis to the flu. And the house doesn't help. Well, they had it seen to, didn't they? Oh, botched up job, I think. If 
far too damp. Guthrie needs doing. A week ago, they had a radiator leak. Carpet had to be taken up, and now it's dried, it won't fit. Oh, poor Mum. Yes, I know. Did you hold off, then, about Louise? No, 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 I told her everything. Well, this may seem odd, but she hardly took it in. She's so worn out, so put upon. Well, she ought to hand it over, Dad. Otherwise, she'll just end up getting ill herself. Well, that's what I said, Gordon. That's why she'll have to get away. Is this what you're looking for? No, you don't. It's mine. It isn't. I saved it. No, you never. You robbed it out of Lenny's wallet when he was here last week. Why should you do a thing like that? You tell me. Well, I didn't. Oh, no, Katie, I saw you. Don't tell lies. Why do you think you weren't found out, eh? Why didn't Lenny say anything? Because I put a fiver back, that's why. Now, you owe me this. It's mine. I need it. What for? Because of do. Because of Crimbo. What? Because of Grandad's present. I spent his present money. There's just loads of time to save some more. Oh, Jeff, I need it for today. I've got to have it for today. Look, if it's for Grandad's present, then there's no rush. That proves you're telling lies. Oh, Jeff, please. Tell me what it's really for. I've told you. No, I want the truth and I'll wait here till I get it. Yeah, but I can't tell you the truth. Then you can't have to five it then until you tell me. No, and you can't make me either. Look, why can't you tell me, eh? Listen, Katie, when you get back from school today, I'm going to be right here waiting. Now, you tell me what's going on, then I can help you. Not before. She'll kill me if I tell. She will. OK, so that's a travelling alarm for Trace. What about Claire? Not toys, that's for sure. Ah, nice one, she. Cheers. How about a nice warm winter nighty? Oh, well, now you're talking. Now, I could lay hands on a nice batch of pyjamas. You know, Batman logo on the front, all of that sort of thing. Really with it. She doesn't like pyjamas. Understatement, now. Nah. You bar. You mean you let her tell you what she's going to wear? <laughs> Sorry, mate, you're going to have to rob nighties now, aren't you? I take the notice of him. Seriously, she? She's only four years old, isn't she? I know. And she's up there now, refusing to get dressed because she doesn't like what I put her out for school. Oh, well, uh, I suppose I could lay hands on a nighty. Just don't let that go cold. I'm off to sort her out. Right. Hey, look, be firm with it. I would. Oh. Uh, Sheila, this is Mr. Trevor, Woolly Bax. Hey. You know, the wool shop. Oh. Cup of tea? I won't. Uh, too much caffeine. Uh, hard. <laughs> oh, right. Will you excuse me? I'm in a rush to get my little girl off to school. Go ahead, sit down. It's a while since I had that with mine. One of them liked school, all right. <laughs> I can't remember which one it was. Said you wanted to talk, so let's talk, eh? I thought it was coffee that was bad for the aunt. Jimmy, me brother. Tea's almost as bad. And I have to be careful, avoiding stress. And paying bills, avoiding paying bills. I know. I want to be straight, like. I'm a man with problems. Yeah, me and all. Yeah, right. My brother's getting a divorce, you know. Could you take a walk? Oh. Well, yeah. I suppose I could wash the dishes, couldn't I? Yeah, and concentrate on that, all right? All right. Well, I don't mind talking personally, because that way we'll understand each other. You see, you're going through a divorce, and my wife died nine months ago. Well, that explains it, doesn't it? Well, not to me, it doesn't. It's why you're in a hurry for your cash. And in my case, I can't pay. Can't or won't. This is amazing. Lucy's letter. And that's why I brought it back for you to read. Well, you'd never believe me. She sounds so happy. Sounds so well for Lucy. <laughs> you can say that again. Balanced, happy, normal. Well, I'm glad. Does Mum let her know? Oh, she'll phone today. Your mother will organise her own traveller's checks if between us we can book the flight. We? Oui. Well, you've got the contacts, Gordon. You don't seriously think I'll go to Chris, do you? <laughs> no, 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 of course not. I meant at work. You lot are always buzzing across. Bound to be a friendly travel agent. Yeah. Yeah, OK, I'll see to it. But you'll have to deal with Louise. Don't palm that off on me. Well, that's hardly a priority, is it? She thinks you went up there to sort things out. She doesn't know I'm back. Dad? Well, I'll wait for her to phone or turn up. Ask her round. Well, if you really panic then... Well, meet her out of school, then. Just be there. Simple. I'm not saying that you go to a loan shack, nothing like that, no. Ta, love. 
you jiggled your finances around so that you put my brother first. Right? All right, Jimmy, all right. You want to take things easy, don't you, eh? Because debts don't do anyone's health any good. I know, because I've been there before, and there's no way I'll be there again, all right? I'll show you my bank statement if you want. Honest to God, the funeral alone. Yeah, well, you didn't need to go to town, did you? She wanted it, that's why. A strong-minded woman, even in death. You ain't had the shop done up. How do you think you'd pay for it? I dreamed of a more modern place, but Megan wouldn't hear of it. Once she was gone and it was mine, I just thought, right, let's go. I didn't sit and think it through. I didn't listen to advice. Now I wish I had. All right, I'll give you a few days. Days? Days! I've done a damn good job for you, and I've got pressures on as well. Like now, I could be late for work, all right? Right. Um, could I use, uh, before I go, I have to take these diuretics, these water tablets. Well, go ahead. Hey, there are ways of raising money, Mr Trevor. Find them, all right? Stupid little toe rag. Hey, he is not as stupid as you think, Billy. And you have got it all wrong, mate. What, the strong arm stuff with him? No, I don't mean that. I mean something a bit more subtle than that. You need a bit of leverage, don't you, hey? That's the way I'd do it, kid. <laughs> I feel the same way sometimes, Margaret. I've finished, I think. Here. If you think that's a challenge, wait till you get in front of this. Uh, another computer. Oh, we'll need it, I think. Can we afford it? Free. We can have this beauty free. Free in return for what? <laughs> oh, nothing sinister. I'd like a little more, John. Uh, I've finished. Have you? I could give you five minutes now. Oh, thanks. Oh, one sec. Nurse, will you give me a shout when you've finished? I'll be in Dr. Holmes' room. Thank you. Right. <sighs> Browse through that if it's any help. I'm not really bothered how it works. How come it's free? The firm gives the computer, we give them data. Wait. Heavily coded, naturally. The firm sells the data on. To? Drugs companies, of course. The data helps their follow-up. You don't think when their pockets enough? Post-marketing surveillance, it's something that has to be done. Look, I know what worries you. But our patients can't be recognised from any information we pass on. This free computer, who else has access to it, do you know? Is this connected to a line or something? Or who else can tag into that? If there were any worries on that score, we wouldn't even consider it. I'd like to know what the others think, maybe the next practice meeting. We talk about premises next time. All these new goodies we're meant to provide. Minor surgery, God knows what. No use if we can't house them, eh? And a decision on this? It's made. Janet's keen, and she's the practice manager. I think on this, her word is law. <laughs> well, you try arguing with her. Gladly, if I had the chance. You had it. Sorry? You had your chance to argue. When? We had a vote on opting out. This is a different issue. No. Once it was decided that we'd run our own budget, it followed that we had to have computers. Computers, yes, but... Hear me out. However much the government puts up to get this new technology in place, the hospitals will take most of that money. So, unless we're organised, we'll lose out. I'm getting us organised, that's all. If a senior partner can't do that... My role. Don't we talk about ethics anymore? Be fair, Michael, we talked. Hours and hours of it. When it came to the vote about opting out, there were three of us for and two against. You lost. However badly you might feel, you just have to accept it. We're ready. Thanks. We'll go and see Janet, if you like. Now, let her talk you through the pros and cons. Sorry, I've got to see Penny now. Penny can wait a minute. I was just wondering how many hours are going to be spent explaining all this hardware. I've got a patient to discuss. And no, our practice nurse can't wait. There you go, kid. One nice, solid, good-looking door. Detached. 
detached from where? The no. wool shop, right? Subtle was the word you used. Oh, effective might be better, eh? No, he's saying he's skint now, so he can't pay me. If he's got to fork out on repairs, he'll have even more of an excuse. Really? He's crying wolf. The money's there, lad. Get rid of it before Sheila gets well, back. Well, listen, look, you need this here. It's something to bargain with, isn't it? You know, your money or your door. Well, get it down the side at least, so it's not on show for the whole of the clothes. All right, yeah. Look, I'll need a lift with it. It's murder on the back, this. No, you got it here. All right, Billy, look, I've trapped a nerve or something. It's killing me. Come on. Right, well, get it back. Get it to your bed and sleep on it. It's good for backs. That do you the world of good. All right. Billy. Well, bye bye, Stephen. See you again. See ya. Bye now. Uh, John, uh, about this morning, I'm sorry I didn't mean to be rude. The idea of freebies for favours. You know how I feel about the reforms. I'm very divided. But in the end, if we don't control our own budget, we stand no chance of getting what we want. When it comes to hospitals and services and so on, I want us there on the front grid, amongst the favour, top of the queue. I owe that to the patients here. Remember Mr McCormick? Yes, of course. He had the colostomy a year ago now. Uh, this morning he was very upset. Uh, during his last checkup at the clinic, one of the nurses was joking about his bag. Uh, the way things are going, she said, you're going to have to reuse these stoma bags, wash them out, use them again. And if you use too many, then your GP won't want to know because you'll be costing him too much. You say that Mr. McCormack was upset, but clearly you were too. What are you saying? I should be more detached? You have only so much energy, emotional energy. And at home, you have your Jessica. I'm a single parent, yes. And here, you have your patients. Fair enough. But if you're going to get yourself worked up because this practice has to move in a way that you don't like or want, that seems to me rather a waste of emotional energy, yes or no? Well, uh, we have different standpoints. I'm the senior partner, yes. Fighting the practice, fighting me, does that help you do a better job? Because that's what I'm concerned about. Has she had the doctor? Oh, Louise. Has she? The doctor's been going up there all the time. Has Annabel had the doctor? No, 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 she's not ill in herself. But you said she was. I said if she carried on taking all the burden on herself, it would make herself ill. That's quite different. The milk. Oh, sugar. Louise, take your coat off and sit down. You're making me nervous. What? You turn off from me outside school. I thought something terrible had happened. I'm sorry. Look, Anna's very tired. She's very low. Oh, well, that's OK. She can come home, then. I'll come round every day and help. I'll do some iron for you. She needs a holiday. I'll make it one. I don't think, given your record lately, well, I'm not sure it would work out like that. Do you think I'd play her up if I knew she'd been poorly? Louise, to come home to this house would not be a holiday for Anna. I meant a real holiday. Winter sunshine, south of France. France! She's going to stay with Lucy. Lucy's invited her to stay. And believe me, it couldn't have come at a better time. When? Sorry? When will she go? In the next few days. But why can't Granddad come? I never see him. Yes, you do. Well, I want him to come here. He can't see my big painting. The one you brought back last week. Well, you can take it to him. It's too big. Not if we take it in the car. You'll get creased. Come on in and have a nice hot drink. No, I'm not coming. Jessica! Jessica! Ooh, 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 you're going to fall. I think your daddy wants you. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Come on, inside. I don't want the drink. Well, I do. I've had a long, hard day and I just want to get inside. Come on. You're hurting me. I don't know what gets into them sometimes, do you? This one wouldn't get dressed this morning. Yes. Oh, Jess is good at getting dressed, though, aren't you? Oh, come on, Claire. I'll leave you to it. Thanks. <laughs> Jess? Jess? Katie, we had Mrs Moss and we did making cake. How many did you make? Only one. It got eaten up. Oh. Can Katie play? 
I don't know if you deserve a treat like that. Oh, please. Please let me talk to Choi. All right, then. Come on. I had to fill her in, of course, on everything that's happened here. Is that why she wants to go away? My love, I've told you 20 times. She needs the break. But it's so far away. I'm going to confide in you now. Things with Lucy haven't always been easy. We haven't always been the best of friends. That's why it matters so much for Anna to go and see her now. She's in some bother, isn't she? That's why it's urgent. No, no, of course not. If she was, Anna wouldn't go near the place. Well, that may be something we don't know. It's so, so rare for Lucy to write. Never mind, invite your mother to stay. So we just can't ignore it, can we? She is our daughter, after all. Yeah. She has first call. Mother's duties to her child. I wish someone had told my mum that. Anna loves you, Louise. She wants to do the best by you. She wants you to be happy. This is cold. That's all right. I don't expect you to eat it now. I'll make you something else if you want. I don't want nothing off you. Now, that's unfortunate. Of course, I was going to go on to say, and Anna insists that I say this, that while she's away, you must come round and Gordon and I will make you welcome. <laughs> I have tried, you know. Gary's right. He's the only one who understands. Understands? That's not what you said to me before. When he was... when he wouldn't leave you alone. Don't! Anna will be home for a day, literally to pack her things and sort out a few loose ends at work. It's highly unlikely that you'll have the time. But she's in a rather emotional state, after all the strain she's been put under up there. So I don't think... She can say goodbye. I think she gets silly and get upset. She said she'll write to you every week. She's only going on a holiday after all. When she comes back, well, we'll all see where we are. I think you put up to this. A letter came from Lucy. Yeah, but you encouraged her to go. That's right. She's my wife. And that means two things as far as I'm concerned. I want her to be fit and well. I have her interests at heart. It also means that I count. My opinion counts. My welfare counts. That's how it ought to be in a good marriage. <laughs> Do you mind? Louise, will you wipe that look off your face? I asked you to do something, do you hear? Go on, hit me. Come on, have a go. I'm used to it. Come on. I can't feel any worse than I do now. I can't. Casey, Casey, give up. Where are you? You shouldn't really hide in here. I wasn't. I was just looking around. Your auntie's clever, isn't she, making all these things? Brenda says she could be rich if she was good at selling it. Is he coming for Christmas dinner? He must have a real old job. Daddy doesn't love Grandad anymore. I thought you were meant to be in the bath. What are you doing in here? Just talking. She's a bit upset about her granddad. Man came last Christmas, it was great. Katie, this is a family matter, OK? You asked if you could help with Jess's bath, and instead I find you in this room where you have no right to be. It's not Katie's fault. She just wanted to talk, that's all. I think you'd better go. You've outstayed your welcome. Please get in the bath. You wash yourself and I'll come in and check. She wasn't telling lies. Her granddad did come for Christmas dinner. Listen, how many times do I have to say I don't want to hear any more about granddad and Christmas? You march off in the street, you show me up in front of the neighbours, and now you bring Katie in on it. You just have your bath and go straight to bed. I'm fed up with you, young lady. For goodness sake, Jessica, please unbolt that door. 
You know it's silly and dangerous. Go away. You're wrong. You're quite wrong about Grandad. I love Grandad very much. Believe me, there's nothing I'd like more. It really is the other way round. It's the other way round. He doesn't love me. Well, not as much as he used to. Why? You know why. America and Alison. Well, I love Grandad more than her. Well, it's not as simple as that, Jess. But it's not fair, though. Oh, I do my best, sweetheart. You don't miss send Kate away. Because? Because you just don't like me. Mum knows you're upset, you know. Sure, you come in crying. So? Was the choice was horrible. Don't mind telling her as well. That's not the only reason you're upset. This is my room. Who asked you in? You're getting bullied bad at school by bagger and her mates. Well, if you know what you want and why all that stupid stuff this morning. I wanted to hear you tell the truth. Yeah, well, you've heard it now, so scram. Look, I thought I could help you, Divvy. Help? I'll show you how you would tell. This got done. Science book. And this, do you know why? Because I didn't have five quid. And I begged you this morning. Look, if she thinks she can go and get money off you, she'll never stop. But I've only got two weeks to get through, then it's the holidays. Oh, you're dead wrong, there. Eh? What do you want? What do you want to happen, eh? Next time she's going to get me right. She's going to do far worse on this unless I get some money. Was I have something from the choice? Only just came in and then he kicked me out. Everyone's against me now. And you. It's all right you sound enough, but you can face up to it. I can't. Well, you don't know what it's like. Wait. Hiya. Uh, Get him out here, will you? He's having his breakfast. Oh, don't be tight. He's having his breakfast. He rang me up. He's signing forms. The club won him. Doorstep interview, you see. The first, perhaps, of many. It's Tramia Rovers, not AC Milan. And Tramia to go in places. I'm standing now outside Five Brookside Clus, the home of Geoffrey Rogers. The boy they dubbed a failure. The boy that couldn't read or write. The boy that felt so sick he ran away. Right. You're in then, eh? Yeah, just took long enough to make the minds. Um, do you want to talk about Katie? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Okay, Why? I think Katie is wrong. 
The moment it starts, it's yours to said something. I mean, the teachers know what bag is like. Well, you said you'd help us on the phone. Erm, um, you two go and talk in my room. I'll get to Sammy. My sister's. She's only eight. Bit of a giveaway, really. Come ahead. I'm going through the clap, you know, to get back at nice. Tell me later, eh? Did you ask Peter if he'd help? But he wouldn't put himself out for me. And anyway, he's too busy with Nisha now. And he blames me for getting her in trouble. Yeah, but you're still friends with Nisha. Yeah. Except, well, her mum and dad found out about the supermarket, so they put a stop to her work in there, and so she can study more. I don't see much, that's all. Do they blame you as well? What do you think? The summons came today to give evidence at the inquest. If they like, they can give me a mouthful there. They probably will anyway. Well, I won't have to be there. Oh, should I know? You'd know if you went to see him more often. Oh, well, not you as well. Yeah, well, my dad's right, you ought to go. And you'd feel better too. Hey, Jeff. Look, I know it's not much of a laugh, but... Look, you're supposed to be sorting Casey out. Haven't you got enough to do? I'm just dead chuffed I'll be training, that's all. I mean, I know I haven't gone stupid overnight or nothing, but my mum thinks I'll give up on all my schoolwork. As if. What's this mean, though? We're supposed to be talking about me. We will be doing. Right, say to Sammy I take on 20 boys, associate schoolboys like me. Well, at 16, we all get weeded out, and only six go through to the second stage. I'll never get you down to me. There's no point in stopping me. Oh, come here. Don't do that. Look, here you go. Now I have Katie Rogers with me. Katie's being bullied at school. Why don't we give Katie a chance to send a special message to those morons who keep persecuting her at school? Katie. Does it work? Bagger, it's Casey, yeah. I don't know why you pick on me. I never heard you in my life. But I can't bear it any longer. I'll kill myself if you don't stop. I was only joking. What do you mean? I mean, I can't give this, like... Well, it's not real, you know. What's happening to me is real. Hey. Count me in, all right? Yeah. Yeah, and I'll do it if you want. And one percent, that makes three of us. Get back it. <laughs> no, Jim, no. I'll meet you there. Look, just be there, right? It's your fault, this, you and that stupid door. Look, I'll see you. Uh, that was the garage. They said I did the right thing, you know, bringing it in. I told work I'd be late. It's just one of those things. Will it be ready for tonight? What? The car. Oh, yeah, I think it should be, yeah. Well, will it be or won't it be? I'll meet you outside the pub, all right? Right. I'll take Claire to Matty's after school and I can get myself off to the pub from there and she can stay the night. I ought to pop back here this afternoon. There's nothing in for your tea. There's no need to do that. I'll get some in the cafe near work. Oh, all right. All this rushing round. Bad-tempered barmaid, that'll be me. Well, maybe I should come in for last orders just in case you're tempted to chin someone, eh? <laughs> Just be there when I come out. And if the car isn't ready... It will be. I was going to say, I could always get a taxi. No, you couldn't. Not from outside a pub, you couldn't. Yeah. I love you, eh? Michael? Mm hmm? Jessica's cutting paper. Please ask her to do it in the kitchen. Yeah, she won't take much notice of me. Not in her present mood. Oh, don't complain about her mood. Not when you could always change it overnight. Well? Oh, come on, Michael. You know what she wants. Please, please ask Father for Christmas dinner. Uh, with Hattie and Alison. You know he wouldn't come if I begged him. Look, Jess can go and see Dad on Boxing Day. As long as we make her Christmas fun, eh? That won't happen without some effort, Michael, and I don't see why it has to fall on me. Well, how do you mean? Christmas shopping? Look, I really am very pushed at work. Oh, yeah, that's just another excuse to duck out of doing things, but I can't duck out, can I? Uh, so what's so urgent? Well, there's buying a Christmas tree and decorations for a start. You're the one who's saying make Christmas fun for Jess. Yes, well, you've already made that point. Uh, 
I'll help, but I don't see the rush. All right, Billy, come out. Let's go in with you. No, you're here to help me with the doors. We try Sweet Lee's and my way. You wait here. Away. Wait. Open easy, lads. Yeah, business as usual. We've got some problems, haven't we, Mr. Trevor? Doors? I know. Mine's costing me a bomb. Yeah, well, for me to get new doors put on my car, that's 50 quid a throw for each door with the display. Right. So I want the owl ones back. They went, you know, because you took mine first. Oh, no, that wasn't me. Oh, your brother, eh? He should be warned. The Lord unto himself, our Jimmy. It's hard to know what he'll do next once he gets into something. Snap. I've got the same with my two lads. But I didn't want them to take away your car doors, but they insisted on it. Don't try and shift the blame, mate. I want that car back in one piece, and I want it sorted by tonight. Luke, I'm sick. Don't pull that one. You owe me. You're in the wrong. I want the doors or you'll be sorry, all right? Don't upset him, pal. That's wrong. I remembered he liked school. I'm Carl. That's our dad. Listen, he played it straight with you. There he was being all up front and you pull a sneaky trick like that. I mean, never mind. He took it off. We hold you responsible and you won't get your car doors back until you promise to leave him alone. I'll leave him alone when he pays off. He just wants a bit of time, that's all. Oh, great. Well, I haven't got any time, have you I? You'll have to be patient, though, because there's nothing you can do. Where's the doors? We had to pay for that. I'm afraid you'll have to do the same. They're loyal, that's all. I can't cross Carl and Rob. Hello, 9443. Who's that? James. You aren't phoning from Australia, are you? Oh, I see. Jet setting businessman. Where are you now? England's a big place, James. Where in England? Present for your niece. I'm not sure she can handle this. She's only six. Six? Time flies. Well, well, anyway... Well, if she doesn't like it, I'll keep it myself. It sails away, and back it comes. Like me, eh? You'll come in? With pleasure. Well, listen here, mate. Must be a cinch finding all your gear now that it is lit. Does your brother know you're here? Oh, it's just between you and me, this. I can't help you. Oh, I think you can. I'll be back for the doors in half an hour, because they're needed. Understood? It's not me, it's Carl and Rob. I don't know where they are. No? Well, maybe this will help you to find out. Oh, no! No! Jessica, sweetheart, it's too soon. Let's do it nearer Christmas, OK? But why? Joe's bought the lights. Hey! He's taking my name in vain. She wants to put the lights up now. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll just hang a few to give you an idea of what they look like. Actually, James, I'd like to get her into the warm. Your muffs on or I'll get shot. The weather must be lovely in Hong Kong. Why leave? Why come to England now? 1992. If you want to export to Europe, you've got to get in now and get yourself a base. Jessica, you're struggling here. Do you think we'll be able to get these lights right to the top? Yeah, I'll fix that for you. Can you? He thinks he can fix everything. 
I met James many years ago when I was a girl at college. I went to talk to some of the students there. And he thought he could fix everything then. You know, the most miraculous thing I managed to fix. Many years after college, I managed to bump into your aunt again. Pure chance. Coincidence. You know where? Hong Kong. My family ran a business in Hong Kong, and I worked for my father there. Look, it's Daddy. Daddy! Caroline's friend is here, and he brought lights, and this is going to be our tree. Hi, you remember James, James Markham. He just turned up out of the blue this morning. Hello there. How are you? Very well. Yourself? Uh, I'm fine. Here. Though I don't suppose you'll be needing it now. I oh. chased out my lunch hour. Michael, thank you. Of course we need it inside the house. Jess, you're looking cold. Come on in. Not with these. That's just your ears, your sausage. Come on, give me a hand. In we go. Oh. <laughs> you'll stay and have a cup of tea. Oh, yes. I'm not going to disappear. Sorry, kid. It's no go. You said you'd get them. Look, he doesn't know where the car doors are. The lads weren't there either. He couldn't get in touch. He tried to phone him up and I stood over him, you know, while he was ringing. You should have seen him. He was sweating like a pig. He didn't sign anything, did you? No, why should I? Look, I want to help. Listen, I borrowed this car for an hour. I'm going back to negotiate now so that you can have it. You know, for getting Sheila from the pub later on. Cos I know that's important to you, isn't it? OK? Sounds complicated. Oh, so's life, mate. Hey, uh, drop us off at the top shops, will you? I want to get something to eat at the cafe. The mess you get into telling lies. Wouldn't know anything about that, Bill. Just drive, will you? Right, just arrive and yell something. Just something to distract her. Yeah. Now, split second, we attack. Right, so she comes running up the close. They turn to look at her, and that's our chance. Great. Ambush. Just yell, uh, Rogers for England. Something like that will do. Bagger will be dead in press. Oh, school will know about Jeff soon. Even Bagger will think twice before she rubbishes him. Oh, aye, yeah. Don't talk soft. That's right, me. You could be 16 on a white yes and still playing reserves. If you're at AC Milan, you just get swallowed up. But what's with AC Milan? She mentioned it. How do you know about AC Milan? Ah, she had an Italian boyfriend. <laughs> Thought Owen was your boyfriend? He was, but then she met the Italian Will lad. Will you shut up? He has a row and Owen was dead sick. Look, you knew nothing about it. Mm. Funny old life. Come on. Can I help? No, thanks. It's OK. Jessica, what are you doing? Uh, 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 uh. No, not all of them. We're going to keep a few for Christmas, OK? Jess, take those earmuffs off. They're for outside. I like them. They get hot and sweaty. First I get cold, then I get hot. Pardon? Jessica, you mustn't be rude to Daddy. Jess. Give. I've got something to show you. No, I have. <sighs> Where am I? A koala bear. A <laughs> <laughs> <I> koala bear. <laughs> hey, I haven't had my present yet. I'll take you out tonight. If that's okay with you, of course. Why not? I wish I could find some way to get a lousy threats on tape. I don't even know what you've brought that for. You'll see. No, no, you've got it wrong. I can't exactly talk to Owen now. I just want to leave him a message to say I'll be coming to see him soon. I'm not sure when, like, but we'll just say fairly soon. No sign of her. Oh, we can't hang on. No, wait. Yo, yeah, well, you want to watch it, you? Your mum's a parent governor. Yeah, we know. Friends of Jenkins, isn't she, eh? Spent hours with him in his room. Couldn't get in. The door was locked. And then she gets elected. Great. Surprise, surprise. So what you mean? She doesn't know what I mean. So what you're on about? No, because you're just a baby. Very, very boring, you. Now give us the money and we're off. 
Squib. I haven't got it. What? We're not here for nothing, Squidge. Yeah, you are, because there's nothing for you, right? And nothing for you from now on. Cloth head doing us Rambo act. Yeah, you just leave our case alone, right? And are you going to make me A? You, start of the special class. Ah, oh, well, it's not just him. There's me as well. And there's something you ought to know. He's going to play for England, right? Yeah. Rogers for England! Hey, come back! Right, you just listen. You just leave it alone, right? From now on, just leave it alone. I'll show you footy, eh? Ah, yes. 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 Don't yes! Don't kick his legs! Hey, pack it in! Right. You try it one more time with her and you're dead. Did you hear me? You're dead. You wait! Just you wait! Jeff, are you all right? Where were you? Come on, Jimmy, come on. God. How do I look? She knows how she looks. Don't answer her. You see, he's rude to everyone. Uh, did I say he'd been rude to me? Don't judge him, Michael. I know you didn't take to him before. Go. Have a good time. I'll be back. Another hour, yeah. I think we're going to make things worse. We should tell them. They're going mad. Bumper really hates, though. He shouldn't have. She'll want to get back, won't she? You can't call Bumper. He was great, wasn't him? Not let us down. Why were you late? It doesn't matter why. Was your watch slow? It doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. It all went wrong because of you. Yeah, well, like everything I touch, I... Now. Yeah, well, she deserves to be. You just go to sleep. Is your leg OK? I'll have worse bruises, me, before I'm finished, before I make it. And I will. You don't think we've made things worse? Look, don't worry about Bagger, cos next time I'll be there again, however many times it takes. Thanks. You know why I think you was late? Cos you couldn't be bothered. Cos all you care about yourself. You shouldn't be in a family, you. You're just plain selfish. Because I couldn't get it fixed in time. Oh, Jimmy let me down, didn't he? Jimmy let you down? How do you think I feel? I've been standing it. Now, honest, I tried to get a cab outside everywhere, honest to God. What's this? It's like stupid games. You're not kids. Oh, Jimmy pinched the wool shop door, didn't he? Oh, you're not kids. You're not kids. Oh, get in. Uh, we'll get us home, eh? <laughs> get in. Get in? It's got no doors. It's dangerous. We'll get picked up by the police. Well, I wasn't on the way. Congratulations. Do you know, I think I'd rather walk. All right, I'll leave it here. We'll both walk. OK. See me, then? 
I went to lock the door, didn't I? All right, I can't leave it here, can I? It'll just get robbed. <laughs> it's me that wants locking up, isn't it? You said it. I'm sorry, though. <laughs> I'm sorry, honest. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> Next, the story of a great little battler preparing for another transplant operation in Jimmy's. Thank you. I thought you might want these two. Oh, thank you. I don't think I'll be needing the sunglasses. <laughs> I thought it was dead hot in France. Well, not in December. <laughs> oh, well, I can always hope. You can't wait to go, can you? Louise. It's true. You'll have forgotten me by tonight. That's silly. Of course I won't. Let me come with you, then. I've already explained that. It'd be easy to get a passport. You just go to the post office and wait. I'm afraid there's more to it than that. Well, I could come in a day or two. I went to Kendall on my own. Louise, I'm staying with Lucy. I can't just turn up with some... You haven't even asked her. I can't do it. Well, if I was going to be there for a short time, if I knew her a little better than I do these days. I don't want you to go. Don't you want me to feel better? Have a rest? I don't want you to go for a long time. I'll miss Christmas. You'll forget me. Oh, how could I ever do that? Look what you've done. Sammy, what are you doing? What does it look like? You knew I was working late tonight. What did I say to you this morning, eh? I don't know. I asked you to start the tea. Oh, I forgot. Well, why can't Jeff and Casey see to it? Sorry, I asked you. What's the matter with you? I just forgot. Yeah, well, you're doing a lot of forgetting lately. I mean, what about Owen? That poor lad stuck in the hospital. You'd sooner mess with these cards. If that was you, Sam, he wouldn't have missed a single day. Oh, well, I'll just start the tea then, shall I? Do try and cheer up. Gordon will be here soon. I'd like you to 
deserve this. Well, go on. You'll need some pocket money for Christmas. It's all right. I want you to have it. To shut me up. There must be lots of people you want to buy presents for. I don't want to know about Christmas. Well, that's an awful thing to say. It's true. I don't care about it anymore. You can't mean that. It's a lovely time. For families, yeah. For everyone. I just don't want to know. Paul and Gordon will be sorry about that. Well, they're hoping you'll come round while I'm away. Especially at Christmas. Oh, yeah. Look, Paul is trying very hard, you know. And as far as all that wallet and all that business is concerned, well, we consider it finished. Paul still wants to see you. He doesn't want me. That just isn't true. He doesn't. I know. He's sending you to France so you forget about well, that's me. That's an awful thing to say, and you know it. Paul is letting me go because he wants what's best for me. He is trying, so why do you keep throwing it back in his face? Look, Louise, I want you to try too. I want you to try to give and take as though you're part of the family. After all, the, the sooner we all get on, the sooner we can think of fostering you officially. As soon as I get back, I'll sort it all out. I won't be away forever, you know. Time will fly by, you'll see. Oh, I said it'll be ready soon, all right. Go in the hospital. Sammy, you're far too early. Yeah, well, the bus takes ages. Oh, love, sit down and have something to eat before you go. You've got loads of time. I want to go now. Sammy, look, love, if you're worried, you should try talking to Owen's mum and dad, eh? Well, I haven't finished my placards, and if I go now, it'll give me more time later. All right, well, I'll put yours in the oven. Now, you can eat with your dad later. No, I don't want any. I'm not hungry. Sammy, you can't go on starving yourself, love. I'm going now. Hey, old swan, I was sitting at these traffic lights and I saw her in the window. You're a big kid. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, I couldn't resist it. I mean, I could picture this in my mind going round and round under the tree and Danny's smiling face. <laughs> Soft, aren't I? Of course you're not. Something I want to, just the three of us. Hey, and that's the way it's going to be. Mick's going to do both shifts, so I'll be at home with you and Dad. I mean, Christmas has been a disaster for years. Except for last Christmas, of course. Except for that, yeah. Look, why don't you go and get yourself a coffee and wait in the visitor's room? I want to see him now. It's only half an hour till visiting. Yeah, well, I mean, I've got an exam. An exam? At this time of the day? Well, it's, um, night school. I've got type in a half seven. Oh, I don't know. Please. Well, which night school? Uh, Brookside Comp. Oh, all right, there. There's just this once. Oh, thanks. He's in the TV room. If I waited, I'd miss my exam, and, like, it's my last exam, so I won't be doing this again. He's in there. I just hope you can cheer him up a bit. He's been very down lately. Jonathan saying he can't make it. Hello? Oh, Jane. <laughs> She's in the bath. We're going out. It's all right, John and Cheryl are babysitting. <sighs> hey, look, shall I get her to ring you back? Christmas. Owen. What do you want? Oh, what a welcome. I thought you'd be pleased to see me. Where have you been the last two weeks, eh? 
visiting twice a day, you know. It's me now, aren't I? I'm glad you think it's funny, Sammy. We worried sick about you. What about? Have you had one of them witness things off the busies? Oh, what are you worried about that for? I'm worried about you. It's a phone call or nothing. Why haven't you been in, eh? Stop getting narky. Hey, don't be narky. See, shush, you're not allowed to talk, aren't we? Sammy. You're born our guest. Hey, what's to do with you? I'm sorry about that. There was no need for that. I said, what's up with you? Nothing. I have an half missed you, you know. Why haven't you been in, eh? Oh, God knows why. Is it because you don't want to see me again, is that it? Don't be soft. Well, why then? It smells horrible in here. It stinks. Sammy, there was no need for that. Yeah, well, I just don't like the smell of hospitals. Yeah, well, some of us have got no choice, all right. No. Have you been drinking? When to say you can come out? I said, have you been on the ale? No! What's going on, Mr Daniels? Um, not in this, Robert's honest. One of the patients says you've been disturbing them. Did him? Sammy! If you can't keep your voice down, I'll have to ask you to leave. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. What's the matter? You're gonna get thrown out if you don't stop shouting. Is that quiet enough? Oh, Sammy. What have you been doing? Sammy. Oh, I don't know. Nothing. <sighs> You've been ages, you know, is it? Your mum. Oh. Did you invite her for Christmas? No. You sure? Oh, no. Well, she's only invited herself round for Christmas dinner, hasn't she? I want to know if she should bring a turkey. What could I say? Oh, God, I told... I told her that we'd be having Christmas round here this year. She's obviously got confused. She must have thought I meant instead of round at her place. Oh, Terry, all of us round here, I'm sorry. It'll only be for a few hours, won't it? I mean, I know we didn't make it last year. Yeah, well, definitely. Christmas dinner, then the Queen's speech and off home with her, OK? Yeah. God, they're here. Oh, well, thank God my dad's been invited to Eileen's. Yeah, thank God. We'll have to please be announced your house at all, then. No. I don't want to talk about it. It's only a stupid piece of paper. Will you forget it? Forget it? How, how can I if it means we've got to go through the whole lot again? Oh, forget it! Sammy! Look, I don't want to talk about it. You have been drinking, haven't you? Oh, don't talk soft. I can tell. Come here, let me smell your breath. Catch me. What? Yeah. Come on, Owen. Wheelchair tick. You're all catch me. Pack it in, Sammy. Yeah, faster. Pack it in. Oh, please, yeah, stop faster. it. Stop Pack it. Stop it. Stop that now. You've been warned, my girl. Now out. No, why should I? You do as you're told, you little madam. Get off! Don't touch me! You're drunk. You're disturbed. No, 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 no. <laughs> Look, what's your phone number? <laughs> Come on, tell me what it is. Do you know? You can't tell her, Mum and Dad. Let's have it. But you'll kill her. The number, please. <laughs> disgusted with you. I'm sorry, I've never seen her in this state, ever. She certainly looks as if she's had a few to me. Have you? No. Sammy, what have you had? What have you been drinking, eh? Told you. Best get her home. A good night's sleep, that's what she needs. She'll get far more than that. Come on, get up. Uh, don't you think you ought to apologise to the staff nurse? I'm sorry. I'm just sorry she missed her exam. Of what? Well, that's why I let her in early, cos she said she had an exam. Sammy, what have you been saying? Just... Just go outside and wait for me. Go on. Look, I'm really sorry. She was in the accident with the boy. Get her home, Mrs Rogers. I'm sorry. That's good timing. Just dropped Mum off at the airport. Christmas in the south of France. Can't be bad, can it? Mm, lovely. Sorry I wasn't at home when you phoned. I stayed on late. I'm still trying to sort out a bump over this lot. Well, hopefully we'll soon have all the proof we need. I nipped over to the bottling plant again, right? 
Hence the urgent phone call. Yeah, well, I didn't want to talk at the office. But I had lunch with a lorry driver today. Amazing what offers you can get for a free cup of coffee. Really? He says he can get me six cases of Chateau Le Mans. Oh, yeah? If I meet him at the bottling plant tonight. Do you think he's the one? I don't know. He says he can get me more, though, if and when I want them. He says this is just a sample, so he must be able to get hold of them pretty regularly. Oh, when do we meet him? Oh, no, I meet him. But, but it was my mistake. Surely I can... No, 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 no. He agreed to meet me. If anyone else turns up, he might back out. I don't know if I've cracked it or not. I know the trucks stop over in the Midlands on the way up here. They could be doing it there. You know, somehow they're, they're siphoning off some of the good stuff and flogging it to people like me. But then the tanks would be left half empty. Not if they were filled up. Mr Miller told you nothing gets past the enologist. Well, he'd have to be in on it then, wouldn't he? Be careful. Yeah, I will. Well, as far as the drive's concerned, I'm crooked too. Then it's straight to Keith with the evidence. Oh, great. You look a hero and I look a prat. I said I'd help you and I will, but it has to be like this. Now, have you eaten? No. Well, there's a casserole in the oven. You got time? I think so. It smells great. How about a coffee? No, thanks. I'm trying to work. Okay. How's Daniel? Any problems? I had to go up three times. Okay? What's wrong with him? <laughs> He's fine now. He's a smashing kid, isn't he? Did Sue tell you what he did when she was feeding him? John, I'm trying to work. Okay. Did you say did you say you wanted a coffee or? broken your promise to me, haven't you? Hmm? Sammy, are you listening to me? That business the other month, you said you were staying at Ronnie's. And you went to that club you'd been drinking then. And you promised me you wouldn't do it again. I'm sorry. Why did you do it, Sam? I don't know. Well, is it Owen loved you feel guilty? Is that it? I don't know. Well, why'd you have to get drunk? I'm not drunk. The nurse said you were shouting and arguing and falling all over the place. Well, she was just annoyed because I went in before visiting time. How much have you had? Two cans of lager. You said one can? Well, I had two cans. I don't believe you. I had two cans. And two cans got you into this state? I'm not in a state. Don't you think you'd be better off not touching it at all if it has this effect on you? You're not all right. Don't you feel ashamed about being thrown out of the ward? Having a nurse ring me up to come and get rid of you? I said, don't you feel ashamed? I am sorry. Oh, see, there you go again, sorry. Yeah, well, it's not good enough, Sammy. These can go to the big man for a start. Oh, Mum! Sammy, you've got to learn that I will not put up with this. And that demo you were on about at the university, well, you're not going. Well, that's not fair! Something's got to stop you from carrying on like this! Everyone from the group's going. I've got to! Well, I'm sorry, but you're not going. <sighs> I'd better get moving. You will watch what you're doing, won't you, <laughs> It's hardly the Brinks Matt robbery. I mean it. You don't know these people. No, it'll be OK. I'll call you first thing. It's really good of you to do all this. <sighs> Thanks. Nothing. And thanks for supper, too. I, uh, I wondered if you might let me return the favour. There's a new bistro open near the flat. I'll pay. Great. Love to. Well, how about the weekend? Yeah, fine. <sighs> right. I've got to go. OK. You just needed changing, that's all. You did that? It's no biggie. I'm impressed. Listen, before you say anything, changing one diaper doesn't make me the perfect mother. I know, but... But nothing. They're not like toys. Something you can go out and buy in your lunch hour. I'd still like one. What about me? What about how I feel? Well, you can still have a career. You can still do anything you want. It's just Daniel that's made you think this. You wouldn't have thought of it otherwise. I would. I don't think so. It's not against kids, you know. It's not a case of never. 
Oh. No. No, it isn't. But just not now. Maybe in four or five years, before I'm 30. That's it. Can I get on with this now? I was going to talk about holidays. No? Yeah, well, somebody was telling me about Bali. He goes every winter. Um, just That's wonder whether you fancy it. Near Australia, right? Yep. It's supposed to be out of this world. I can't. This winter's awkward. I am busy. OK, well, later on. What do you think? OK. Fine. Great. What should we get it for Christmas? <laughs> no, come on, what do you think? I don't know, there's plenty of time. Perhaps something. Oh, I don't have a clue what to get for a baby, do you? Ask Terry. No, I want it to be something we've thought about. We'll have a shopping trip one afternoon. When do you finish? End of the week. I thought it was the week after next. No. Well, what's stopping us going, then? We'll go, No, okay. no. I don't mean shopping. I mean Bali. We could get away from everything. Work, weather, all that Christmas stuff. That's a great idea, Jonathan, but I just don't have time to get organised. I'll do all that. I'd sooner go later. Plan together. Look forward to it. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I suppose so. I don't want to knock the idea. No, no, fine. I'll take your point. What are we going to do for Christmas, though? I don't know. It's weeks away. It's only a fortnight or so. What do you want to do? Hmm? We can go to Vancouver if you like. You choose. Vancouver takes just as much sorting out as Bali. Can't we decide later? Yeah, I'm easy. Can I get on with this? Yeah, of course. Sorry. You're going to be long with that. Can't we get a move on? What's the matter? Nervous, are we? Well, how about the security staff? Oh, don't you be worrying about them. Have you got the cash? You sure it's good stuff? How do I know I'm not being conned? What do you want me to do? Hold a wine tasting? Of course it's good stuff. Just take my word for it. All right. How'd explain the tanks are half empty? Eh, uh, yeah, I thought you just wanted some cheap wine. Why all the questions? I'm just interested. Can't see how you do it. The tanks inside are full of cheap Italian, wine lake crap. We top it up with that. Satisfied? Just interested. Yeah, well, you just back your car up and I'll get your cases. Usually the last to leave a do, but it felt funny both of us being away from him. Well, he's been all right. Cheryl had to change him, though. Did she? Yeah. Well, why not? I call it practice. Yep, I think she's coming round to the idea. Well, at least she didn't knock it on the head completely. Ah, oh, well, don't rush it, eh? No need to, no need. As I say, we're getting there. <laughs> I hope you didn't disturb your work. No, Jonathan took care of that. I beg your pardon? Mother wouldn't have minded. He has to turn even a babysitting session into a planning meeting. No, it seems like he has this sort of five-year plan that has to be tied and done to the minute. Christmas, holidays, babies. Babies again? Yeah. I think he's got the message on that one, though. Oh? Sure you don't want to stay for a cup? No, I think we'll just go. Bye. John? Look. Next time you want anything, you can always get me at that cafe. Or you can always leave your number with that girl. Right. Stop, police! Oh. Stay where you are! Get off! Get off me!
You're watching Living, the number one channel for women. the time. I have got to go to work, you know. God, where the hell is he? It's hours since he went. Like. How are we going to get it off? It's pasted solid. I suppose this is your mates in the wool shop. Could be kids. Kids? Come off it, Billy. What kid's going to do this? What have you done to them? Nothing. Do you mean take us the front door? They swipe the doors off the car. There's a stage missing, isn't there? I haven't done nothing, honest. What about your Jimmy? <laughs> Why should he? I'll ring him. Yeah, and tell him to get round here and give you a hand, even if he hasn't done anything. He started all this. Oof, you should have seen Jenkins' face. How many times have you looked at that photograph then? He was trying to get in on the photo, eh? but you could tell he was really made up for me. Oh, I'm sure he was. Yeah, but he's not even a games teacher, though. Yeah, will you make sure you get a copy of that photograph for your granddad, eh? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to get the onions. Look, will you nip out and get us a couple of, eh? Oh, Mum. I need them. I was waiting for Bumper. Yeah, well, let Bumper wait for you. Oh, come on, it won't take long. Jeff, I'm working late tonight. Do you want to wait for our Sammy to make the tea for you? Oh, all right. Come on, you take that. Don't be long, I haven't got all day left. Listen, you, just get your head together and get round here, all right? Well, get out of bed, then. No, I'm not having you on. Just get up and get round here, all right? I want to know what's been going on, that's why. Just get round here, OK? Well? He's coming. I don't know how we're going to shift it. Right, Mr Collins, let's get on with it. I thought the other bloke was interviewing me. Sorry, you'll have to make do with me. Detective Sergeant Finch, Regional Crime Squad. Regional Crime? Let's get on with it, shall we? You were apprehended at 11.26pm last night at the bottling plant in Sedgwick Road. What were you doing there? Uh, I've, I've explained it all to that Mr. Stevens. Well, now you're going to have to explain it all to me. Hey, aren't you dressed yet? I'm sure or not. Well, you better get your skates on if you're going into town, hadn't you? Not going. You were given the day off for shopping, that's what it's for. I haven't got any money. Well, what about your pocket money, love? You can't have spent it all. It's gone. What on? I don't know. Stars, sweets and stuff. Are you sure? Yeah. All right, well, if you're not going into town, you help finish making that stew, yeah? All right, then. Hmm. I'll just go to get some onions. You just chop them up and put them in, yeah? I had no intention of selling them. 
What would you have sold them for? I wouldn't have. If you had. I wouldn't. If you had. I don't know. I suppose... 140, 150. Nice little bonus. But I didn't. That's because we lifted you. Look, I've explained it all. I told him last night. Tell me. <sighs> because these people, that driver, has been palming off bad wine on our firm. It's bad for business. We've already had to replace about 30 cases. Then why buy stolen wine? To minimize your losses? No, to try and put a stop to it. I was going to give them to Keith, my boss, and I was going to give them to him to prove how they're doing it. It's not your firm, so why all the bother? I like the job. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to show him... I don't know, I just wanted to show him that I could solve problems, not just create them. We saw Mr. Patterson earlier. Now, according to him, you hadn't caused any problems. It was another employee. A Miss Benison. She bought this inferior wine. Yes. Yes, I know. But, um... But what, Mr. Collins? We'd have taken those six cases to the police. I'm sure of it. Or used them to make good your girlfriend's mistake? <laughs> She's not my girlfriend. Not yet. Hoping, though? No, not at all. You didn't mean to impress her. Sticking your neck out, receiving stolen goods, helping to get her off the hook. I did it for the company, for Keith, to catch these people. Why didn't you tell Mr. Patterson what you were doing? I suppose I wanted to impress him. I think you wanted to impress your girlfriend. She's not my girlfriend. So who is your girlfriend? <laughs> is this relevant? I said, who's your girlfriend? I don't have one. But you have more than a professional interest in Judith Benison. No. It's an old, old story, Mr. Collins. I'm not interested in Judith. Oh? I don't have girlfriends. I'm... Uh, I'm not interested in girls. I see. I think we'd better get all this down on paper. Now, do you want to write it, or shall I? Well, the Trevor's been. It's got to be. What have you done to them? Not no, just, you know. What have you done to them? Who? You know who I mean, the wool shop lot. Nothing. Oh, come off it. People don't do this sort of thing for no reason. They robbed the doors off his car, didn't they? Yes, he? because of what you've done to them. Oh, go away. They don't need an excuse, those two. They won't burn and... Look, no more stupid tricks. If you want to help, get hold of this. Go away. I'm off to meet Debbie in town. I'll see you later. Go on, left. No, thanks. He can't do that on his own. What's that, remote decorations? Oh, that's them, love. Most people just do a few snowflakes. What's that? Just beat it, will you, lads? Hey, hang on, Bill. Hey, lads, uh, do you want to make a few bob? Easy money. No. Who did it? You heard beat it. What is it, paper? Are you deaf or something? I've just said beat it. Hey, there's nothing down for it if it's stuck on with super glue. Do you two know something about this? Oh, don't go accusing me. Look, just do one, will you? Uh, I think I'll get on to the busies and uh, ask them to have a word with you two about this. Go on, it's nothing to do with us. You can't stick it on us. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Jimmy, I know who did it. I just want to know why. What's it matter? It's me that's got to live here, not you. All right, listen. I went into the wool shop, right? And I set this out fire extinguisher off. You what? Should have seen it. It went all over the shop. There was water everywhere. You stupid pillock. You told me you just threatened him a bit. Yeah, well, it's no use just talking. How many times do I have to tell you that? What else have you done? Nothing. Come on. Nothing. I'm telling you, honest. Hey, but we own another one now, don't we? Oh, no, we don't. And what about the money? I'll wait for the money. Oh, Jesus, Billy, what is wrong with you? You're soft. Look, you need that money. You've got to keep up the pressure, lad. No, I don't. Sheila's taken enough of it, and I don't want any more. Here, your turn with these. And make sure you do a good job. Oh, way. Should be him and his two thick old lads doing this, not me. There's moons and moons. Oh. Don't go into town for your busy buzzies. Oh. Why? Bagger and mates will be there, won't they? Shoplifting. That's what they want me for now. What? They took me dinner money off me yesterday and asked for some more. Didn't have any. She wants me to go start necking for it. From shops? Yeah. You're gonna have to do something, Casey. What? 
I'll tell you, ma'am. Oh, she can't do that. If she goes down to school, couldn't we sort it out? She'd get kicked out or suspended or something. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do then? Go nick him for her. I don't know. Is that you, sir? Yeah, it is. Me mum, stop crying. Oh, what's the matter, love? It's your onions. Go on, then. I'll finish them up. Have you two got anything to do? Aren't you going into town? No. I don't know, man. Mm. Chef, you know you were asked to keep an eye on Katie? Yeah. Well, is she all right? Yeah, why? Nothing. I just wanted to come. Right, well, Mr Collins, sign there and there. You believe me? I reckon so. Does all this have to come out, then? Are oh, you fancying Mr. Patterson? It's just not like that. It's just. I'm not, not interested in your sex life, Mr. Collins. Well, you have a funny way of showing it. You just count yourself lucky you're not on a receiving charge. Does it have to come out? If it comes to court. You gave me the impression. This was a preliminary interview, Mr. Collins. And a complete waste of time for this force and a few others. Sorry? You have got that months of squad work here in the Midlands and on the South Coast. We have been onto this lot for months, and we've blown it. Thanks to you playing Lone Ranger, turning up dressed like a dog's dinner, we thought you were something bigger than a bent truck driver. That's why we had to go in. Another bloody lot are onto us. They've all done a bunk, including that wine chemist at the bottling plant. Sign that, clever boy. Please bail. I want you back on that time and that date for further questioning. Now, if I don't want you, you'll be informed. Right, out. Waste of time, really, wasn't it? You're more likely to get the bullet on a date with your boss. That's it. That's enough. Oh, come on. You said ten minutes. I said five, but you've only done three. Listen, you. I'm knackered. I've been slaving away at those windows all morning. Oh, come on, lads. You said you'd help me out if I took a few shots off, yeah? Yeah, for ten minutes. Oh, hey, come on. Hey, you. What's this? It's just a breather, Bill. Come on, get on with it. I want all that off before Sheila gets back. You two, leave me alone. <laughs> hey, I never forget anyone who welches on a deal. You know the onions that Jeff got? Well, there was some change with them. Did you take it? No. Are you sure? Yeah. There must have been at least 70p. Now, are you sure you didn't take it? I haven't touched it. You said you had no money. I still haven't touched it, I haven't. But you took 80 pence the other week. You did, didn't you? Out. Oh, Mum, it's freezing. Will you go on? I will go upstairs. Go on, then. Hurry up. Go on. No, I want the truth, my girl. I had to. What do you mean you had to? I would have paid it back. What did you do with it then? I spent it. What on? Now, come on, Katie, I want the truth. What did you spend it on? Sweets. You get plenty of money for sweets. You don't have to steal to get more. Are you sure it was sweets you were buying? I didn't take it for that. Yeah, well, what for then? I wanted to get Grandad a good present for Christmas, but it wasn't enough. I just spent it. Why make yourself a thief for that, eh? You know you could have asked me, you could have asked your dad. No. Well, what about the change from these onions, then? I didn't take it, Mum, I didn't. Katie, I think that you did. Honest, Mum, I didn't. Will you go upstairs? I'm trying to talk to Katie. Mum. Will you do as you're told? I heard what you were saying. She didn't take the change. I used it to um, order that picture of me for my granddad. Well, in future, if you take money, would you tell me? Oh, come on. Oh, I'm sorry, love.
but you've brought this on yourself. Look, you promise me you don't do this again in future, eh? All right. Hiya. Hiya. Hello. He's really growing, isn't he? Too right, he is. Just think, he looked like this once. Ah, it's a pity he's not big enough to use one of these, isn't it, eh? Just as long as he doesn't grow up to look like him. Yeah. Oh. Debbie's asked me to mind him just till after tea. He's welcome here any time, aren't you, son, eh? Can I have a word with you when you're finished? Yeah, there won't be a minute now. Hey, you. She's back now, so no more sounding off about burning down that flaming shop, all right? You are going soft, you know that. If I get back at them, it's going to be legal. No more stupid stunts with doors and all that. Billy, he'll stiff you forever more. You'll never get paid. Hey, for me, mate. So, I'll just have to take that chance then, won't I, eh? I've had enough of this. I'm going down the swan for a pint. Yeah, I'm in a generous mood. I'll get you one. Are you coming? Jesus. What's that? Old man Trevor sent you the cheque, has he? Off the solicitor, interim costs on a divorce, 264 flaming quid. Yeah, see? Do things legal and that's what it costs you. You look as if you could do with that pint. Where am I going to get that kind of money? Hey, listen. What? Well, where's your tools? In the car and I'm staying there. Look, meet me in the swan in half an hour and I'll show you how you get your money. How? Never mind that. You just be there, right? And don't forget those tools. Done. Yeah. There you go. He's not very happy at the university crash, Debbie was saying. Oh, I. Yeah, too many kids. It unsettles him. He's asked me if I'd look after him. What do you think? Well, that's all right. Uh, can you manage? That's the point. Well, she knows it can't be every day, but I couldn't have looked after him at all if I got the other job, could I? It's a pity you didn't get the other job. Why? Yeah. First bill on the divorce, 264 quid. Oh, no. All comes at once, doesn't it? First mortgage payment, new doors for the car. I'm going to need all that 500 quid, you know. I'm going to have to put pressure on this Trevor bloke. No. I'd do it through a solicitor. Only a cost of bomb and take forever, wouldn't it? Look, I'll let you have the money. No, no, there's no need. Anyway, it's all tied up in your bank, isn't it? Well, it might take time to get it, but if it puts an end to this Trevor rubbish, I will. No, I can't do that. Billy, I want to. All right, thanks. But it might be a while before he coughs up, you know. Will I get it back before Christmas? I should think so, yeah. OK. I'll sort it out tomorrow, then. What happened? You never called. He's in a hell of a mood. He said he'd take you home. I nearly got the sack. I was arrested. Arrested? They were going to charge me with receiving. Oh, my God. I've had a right rollicking off Keith. They got him out of bed at six o'clock. He said, that's it. One more mistake. I'm out of a job. Oh, no. Oh, don't worry. You were in the clear. They just think I was doing it to impress you. In the end, I managed to convince them I wasn't. But you were only doing it to try and help me. Oh, my God, if I'd have admitted that, I'd have been in the dock by now. On and on and on about how you were my girlfriend and... Oh, it's just ridiculous. I wish I hadn't got involved. First decent job I've had and I nearly blew it. You sure it's going to be all right? Well, the damage is done now, isn't it? I've had a first warning off Keith and I've cocked up some major police investigation. They were already on to the people involved. But does Keith know that? Of course he knows. Forevermore, he'll be breathing down my neck. I won't be able to make a wrong move or he'll have me out. Wish to God you hadn't told me about the damn wine. Why couldn't you just go to him and admit it, eh? God, I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean that. Can I get you a drink? Yeah, coffee, please. I'm shattered. Stepping out for a pint, all right? Oh, OK, love. I suppose it'll be the last till Christmas at this rate. Stop worrying about money. I've told you there's no need. As long as I get it back before Christmas. Yeah. Hey, what's this, drinking and driving? Yeah, I'm only going for one. Why don't you walk? That's only a pint, isn't it? <laughs> Not if I know your brother, it won't be, especially as he's had all this physical exercise this morning. I'll be all right. That's what Bob said last Christmas. Don't risk it, love. Don't worry. I'll be OK. Uh, I thought I might go and see, you know, Jackie Thompson. He said he uh, might have a couple of foreigners for me, like. Now? Well, you never know your luck, and uh, I thought I might take the toolbox. Oh, OK. See you, love. Oh, I'm 
thanks. Sorry about the dressing gown. I was just going to have a bath and then get some sleep. That's all right. What did your father say? Oh, don't ask. Mum's phoned. Terrified in case the Liverpool bench hear anything. And Dad's more paranoid about his car being damaged. He's gone to liberate it from police custody. Sorry about... Um, I shouldn't have blamed you. I was the idiot for starting it all. I do appreciate what you did. It's just... I'm sorry, you know. I just hope I can live it down at work, that's all. Keith's never spoke to me like that before. I thought he was going to sack me. I don't know what stopped him. Well, I could have a word if you like. Well, see, it was because you were trying no, to help. No, 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 no. Let it die. Don't say anything. OK. I won't mention it. That meal at the weekend. I don't suppose you're interested now. That's all right. I'll come. said legal. Yeah? So what could be more legal than taking back the gear you haven't been paid for? I'm not sure. Look, stop worrying, will you? They can't touch you for it. Got a way to Sheila, all right? Billy, you need the money. This is the way. Honest. Come, Ed. Sorry, we're closing. Half day. Not today, you're not, Grandad. The electrician's here. Right. You got what you're doing? I've told you, I can't manage. Billy, cut the juice off, lad. Oh, Ed. What are you doing? We're taking back this lot, aren't we? Wires, sockets, junction boxes, the flaming lot. When you cough up the readies, you can have it back, all right? My lads won't like this. It's off. They're going to have to lump it, aren't they? It's all legal, this, mate. Not the spotlights. Billy, where do you want me to start, kid? Just hurry up, will you? Look, it's no good sitting round crying or nicking money off me mum. Tell your teacher. I can't. You can. She'll get suspended and that's the end of it. She'll get me. Look, what's better, today? Eh? Telling your teacher or having me mum go down there. And that will cause trouble if Bagga knows you snitch to your mum. She'll get me whatever I do. She will. I'll just have to do what she says. Look, you can't do that going robbing from shops. Bagga says she'll kill me if I tell me mum. Just leave it. Mum thinks to nick the money for Grandad's present. She believes me, so just leave it. I will if you tell your teacher. No. Well, I'll tell someone then. I'll tell Mr Jenkins. You will, Katie. Bag, I'll just say you tried to beat her up. He won't believe you. Look, he went with me to sign my papers to tram you. He knows I'm not a big scally no more. He'll believe me. No, he won't. He'll just make it all worse. No, it won't. I'm going to see him. This is vandalism. I did just right in here. Yeah, on his time and money. Come on. I'll have the police on you. Oh, will you? Well, go on then. Ring him. I've told you once, it's all legal, this, mate. Come on, let's get going. Oh. Oh. You all right, mate? My chest. Engine. I'm taking the notice of him. He's playing the old soldier and he's famous for it. Come on. Should we phone a doctor or what? Billy, just move it, will you? He looks a bit rough to me. Get an Oscar for that, the old guy. Come on. He's conned you once. Don't let him do it again. Transplant operation gives 41 Catherine Benny a new lease of life next at Jimmy's.